Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the South Planning Committee here at Shire Hall today. We are not expecting a fire drill today. In the event there is armed sending, please leave the building and gather at the front of the building. I would like to inform you that this meeting is being live streamed and recorded. But I also ask you please to ensure mobile phones are switched off. In order to, that those watching and live stream now, really speaking, members of officers introduce themselves prior to speaking. To ensure members of the committee and all points raised by the public speakers are properly heard, I must advise you I will not tolerate any disruptive behaviour. This is a meeting held in public, not a public meeting. And if such behaviour takes place and persists, I will adjourn the meeting. I shall now ask members of the committee and officers to do introduce yourselves. Hilary Love, Community Councillor for Church Stratton and Craven Arms. Caroline Badnell, Councillor for Brosley. Tony Parsons, Councillor for Basin Hill, Colum and Sutton. Councillor Nigel Hartin, Councillor for Tundinch. Councillor Christian Lee, Councillor for Bridge North East and Astley Abbots. Nigel Lumby, Councillor for All Brighton. Councillor uh, Ed Potter, Councillor for Luton. Nick Hignall, Councillor for Bay Valley Ward. Kelvin Hall, Principal Planner. Graham French, Principal Planner. David Evans, Councillor for Church Set and Craven Arm, also chair of this committee. Idris Iqbal, Solicitor. Tim Ward, our clerk. Right, can apologies for absence, please? And apologies from councillors Andy Boddington and Roger Evans. Thank you very much. Uh, meeting held on the 18th of October. Uh, could I have a proposal for the minutes and a second there as they are a true record, please? Councillor Parsons? I'll, I'll move the correct record. Thank you. Councillor Bagdon? I'll second. Thank you. All in favour, please? Thank you. Recognise it. Public questions? No public questions, Chair. Okay. Disclosure of pecuniary interest, please. Any pecuniary interest? Get it on me. The <coughs> item on the solar farm is on my ward, so obviously I'll speak and then I'll leave the room. Thank you very much. Item, uh, Christian Lake, please. Uh, item seven and eight, the roundabout junctions, uh, the sponsorship signs, these fall within my ward, so I'll leave the room. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? No, in that case, we'll go on to item number five, the Coast Solar Farm at south of Hollyhead Road, all right. Graham, please. Thanks, Chair. Could we have the layout plan on the uh, presentation, please? Oh, I'm not putting more. So, um, this application, which uh, members visited the site this morning, is for a um, solar farm with a capacity of 23 megawatts, comprising the solar panels, security fencing and CCTV, internal access tracks, underground cabling, inverters, substation, battery storage, grid connection and landscaping. The site would generate enough electricity to power approximately 7,600 homes annually. Construction would take of the order of six months. 
The site would have an operational life of up to 40 years, after which it would be decommissioned. As I say, members visited the 54.7 hectare site this morning, which comprises four adjacent agricultural field parcels south of the A454 and the village of Bonningdale. We saw that the site is uh, divided by sandstone ridge and there are um, different levels within it with uh, two of the four fields being at a lower level and, and two at a generally higher level um, and intervening hedgerows defining the um, field boundaries and, and also the, the sandstone ridge itself upon which sits the Upper Pepper Hill farm. So um, the benefits that the applicant has advised proposals to deliver are, um, in addition to solar, um, net biodiversity gains of 70% for habitat units, 474% for linear habitat units, including creation of 36.7 hectares of species-rich grassland, 1.47 hectares of heathland scrub and transitional habitats and enhancement of over two kilometres of existing hedgerows. A proposed legal agreement would deliver £200,000 to renovate the Grade 2 listed Upper Pepper Hill farmhouse, currently derelict, which we saw from the site visit this morning and is located towards the centre of the map. If we can have the next slide, please. Uh, this just shows um, an earlier iteration of the distribution of the arrays. Ne next slide, please. So this shows the current um, iteration of the array um, uh, layout, uh, and it will see on the northeastern side that uh, uh, a substantial field area, the arrays have been removed from that. Uh, and you just see the, the alignment of these separate but close field areas with the, um, the, the um, south and um, the, the southerly and southeasterly um, fields being at a higher elevation generally than, than the um, and the other northern fields which we visited. Um, so in, in terms of other benefits, uh, there is a permissive horse track and footpath which will be provided around the northwestern field. This would sit outside of the planning process but is initiated by the, the, um, this scheme. Um, um, I've just heard this morning that um, further dialogue has taken place between the applicant and uh, the parish council. Uh, which encourages the um, opportunities to establish a footpath link from the, um, the western field, its southeastern corner, um, where the horse hack would be at its southernmost point, um, across the sandstone ridge and linking via Upper Pepper Hill Farm to an existing footpath on the eastern side of the site. So that would provide connectivity between the settlement of Bonning. Gale and, and its pub um, and the um, uh, forested area uh, Patsell Park to the south in, in South Staffordshire area. Um, the, um, there is also an opportunity for educational provision uh, for local children. There have been discussions between the applicant and the um, local scouts uh, but also um, I think they've discussed with local schools um, opportunities for regular visits and renewable work. Um, uh, the applicant advises also proposals to deliver one and a half million to 1.7 million of gross added value um, during construction around 2.1 million in total um, and a significant employment opportunity both directly and indirectly. Scheme would deliver annual business rate contribution of £46,000. So in terms of consultations, Bonning Gale Parish have objected on the basis of impact on Greenbelt, loss of amenity and visual impact, including from views from the parish high point, which we visited this morning, um, and the impact on best and most versatile agricultural land. The council's historic environment team has objected initially on grounds of less than substantial harm to the setting of Upper Pepper Hill Farmhouse, but have since acknowledged the proposal to fund restoration of the farmhouse from the solar revenues. South Staffordshire District Council have expressed similar concerns in relation to heritage. Um, as I say, the, the um, legal agreement now proposes uh, refurbishment from solar revenue of, of the listed farmhouse. 
Um, Climate Change Task Force support renewable energy benefits for the scheme. Landscape advisors confirm that the amended LVIA is acceptable. They advise proposals comply with landscape and visual policy, but must also demonstrate special circumstances in order to comply with Greenbelt policy. Councillor Lumby objects on Greenbelt agricultural food resilience and conservation grounds. Uh, apologies, but there was an additional representation made recently from Councillor Lumby, which should have found its way onto the um, late update sheet that relates to food resilience. I, I, we're going to hear from Councillor Lumby in, in a bit. Um, so there are no objections from other consultees. There have, however, been 102 public representations. Of these, a surprisingly high proportion in support, 78, um, and 22 objecting to neutral. Objectives refer mainly to the benefits of clean energy. Uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. <laughs> um, objectives refer mainly to concerns in relation to agriculture, greenbelt, visual heritage, biodiversity, traffic, and drainage. Supporters refer to benefits of clean energy, meeting greenbelt special justification, reversibility of proposals. Country Landowner Society supports the economic and biodiversity benefits of the scheme. Fossil Free Shropshire supports the scheme for assisting to combat climate change following Shropshire's declaration of a climate emergency. Mark Pritchard MP objects due to effects on productive agricultural land, greenbelt location and visual impact. The Ramblers Association expresses concerns that there shouldn't be any adverse visual impacts from the nearby footpath which runs to the east of the site that we saw this morning. Um, so in terms of policy, the key issues really are um, the benefits of the proposals, including renewable energy, appropriateness of development within the Greenbelt, implication for best and most versatile land and cultural heritage. In terms of renewable energy, this is supported by national policy. MPPF paragraph 158 requires renewable energy schemes should be granted unless the level of harm would significantly and demonstrably outweigh benefits or specific policies in the MPPF indicate the development should be restricted. In terms of Greenbelt, the MPPF does, does not prevent the establishment of solar farms in Greenbelts, and there are many such examples. It does, however, acknowledge that elements of solar farm development can be inappropriate in the Greenbelt and will need to be justified as very special circumstances where any harm is outweighed by other considerations. MPPF paragraph 151 states that the wider benefits the economic benefits and environmental benefits associated with new renewable energy production can justify as very special circumstances. The committee report assesses the proposal against Greenbelt uh, policy and finds that there are some limited impacts on openness. A statement from the applicant justifies the various benefits of the scheme. Committee report then concludes that any benefits are sufficient to qualify as very special circumstances which outweigh any impact to Greenbelt openness. In terms of best and most versatile land, MPPF paragraph 174 advises that planning decisions should recognise the economic and other benefits of such land. Footnote 58, paragraph 175 states that where significant development of agricultural land is demonstrated to be necessary, areas of poorer quality land should be preferred to those of a higher quality. However, this section relates to plan making rather than decision taking, so we can't apply the same sequential test uh, to best and most versatile in determining an application. There's no additional national guidance on the weight to be given to the protection of best and most versatile. It's a matter for the decision taker to weigh up against other matters such as renewable energy benefits. National policy does not preclude development on higher quality land. However, draft national energy policy statement EM3 indicates an expectation that the applicant should justify their choice of site in such instances Draft policy DP26 of the Emerging Shropshire Local Plan also establishes a general preference for use of poorer quality land and advises that proposals should allow for continued agricultural use wherever possible and or encourage biodiversity improvements around arrays. In this case, the proposals retain agricultural use through proposed grazing between the arrays and result in substantial biodiversity improvements around the arrays in accordance with this aspect of emerging policy. Applicants have justified the choice of site with support statement from the owner Mercer Farming and a supplementary agricultural statement which is in the additional reps report. Farmer's statement indicates low yields of seven tonnes per hectares for the array fields. It explains how the farm was acquired in 2020 and sets out proposals for sustainable farming, management and reinvestment into this large holding. The applicants demonstrated that there are no 
other more feasible sites capable of connecting to this part of the grid, which are outside the greenbelt and avoid best and most versatile land. Hence, such land must be affected if this particular grid connection potential is to be realised. The applicant provides further general support for this site from a renewable energy consultant whose conclusions align with those of the Council's Climate Change Task Force. The officer report advises that solar farms currently account for 0.08% of total land use, and the government's target for a fivefold increase in solar would result in 0.3% of UK land area being used by solar. This is equivalent to around half the space used nationally by golf courses. The consultee report suggests in appendix two that um, com committee report in appendix two that limiting factor for food production in the UK is not the availability of suitable land, but instead energy security, which the current proposals seek to address. In terms of heritage, the council's historic environment team finds the proposals result in less than substantial harm to setting a grade two listed farmhouse. No other heritage assets are found to be subject to such harm. The applicants responded to this with supplementary heritage statement, an additional reps report, and a commitment to enter into a legal agreement to fund the cost of restoring the derelict farmhouse for an optimal viable use. The historic environment team acknowledged that legal agreements to secure funding have been used to mitigate the effects of development on heritage assets. In terms of visual impact, the Council's landscape advisor are not objected and following some recommended amendments has validated methodology and conclusions of the applicants' landscape and visual assessment. Some objectors expressed concern that the proposals give rise to visual impact to use of footpath, um, which runs along the east side of the southern field for 300 metres, which we saw this morning. The applicants, however, proposing a native hedgerow screen to close views from the arrays in this area the wider landscape views of the Rekin Hills beyond would remain available. As in other areas of the site, there have been no objections from other, as in other areas of the site, there have been no objections from other technical consultees with respect to issues such as highways, trees, ecology and drainage. So in conclusion, Chair, relevant Greenbelt policy tests have been met. Very special circumstance justification exists for the proposals. It's considered the applicant has justified the choice of this site with respect to best and most versatile agricultural land and the needs of the farming business. The site assessment suggests that any alternative sites, if feasible, would also be in the Greenbelt and would be likely to affect best and most versatile land. Also considered the appropriate mitigation has been put forward to address heritage issues and visual concerns and that no other issues have been identified which are not capable of being satisfactorily controlled by recommended conditions. To consider the benefits of proposals in terms of renewable energy, climate change, biodiversity and ecology economy are sufficient to outweigh concerns in relation to greenbelt, agriculture and other environmental issues, such that development is compliant overall with development plan and national policy. It's not considered the level of harm from permitting the development significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits of proposals uh, in accordance with MPPF 158. As such, the instruction in the NPPF to approve renewable energy schemes should apply. Um, I just want to remind members, finally, um, um, there's reference in the committee report to a community benefit fund which the applicant has, has um, intending to set up. I would emphasise that whilst this is acknowledged positively, the committee cannot have regard to this as a material factor in determining the application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Right, we have some speakers on this, five in all. Um, we've got Mr. Andrew Gilson. If you'd like to come and address the committee, sir. Yeah. If you'd like to press the right hand button, you have three minutes to address the committee. Thank you. Oh, thank oh, Sorry. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity of speaking. I live within the parish, immediately to the north of the proposed development. I must note that I'm a councillor on Bollingout Parish Council, but my comments are expressed in an individual and do not represent those of the council itself. Thus, my comments reflect my own opinions and those of the many members of the parish who have expressed the support for the project to me. Looking at the objections that have been raised, many of those arise from the overwhelming majority have come from residents of the Bollingout village itself. It must be noted that all these objections arose before low carbon issue of the revised plan, which dramatically reduced the area for panel installation and thereby making a very significant reduction in visual impact in that area in, of the village. 
Apart from visual impact, the other major concern is obviously the one of animal land being converted to animal production. However, as noted, um, is it not prescriptive that uh, there should be a, a form of objection? Local benefits would include a uh, significant increase, as mentioned, in biodiversity, improving habitats for wildlife, bird, insects, and importantly, pollinators. New footpaths and off road bike ride and waiting enjoyment of both locals and visiting uh, walkers and riders. A reduction in farming related disturbances by reducing associated noise, dust, and decreasing tractor movements along rather narrow lanes and the main road. At a higher level, benefits which affects the future well-being of all of us and subsequent generations. Project will approval would enable Shropshire to play its role in addressing climate change by reducing its reliance on carbon, and carbon dioxide producing energy sources, improve energy security by generating locally and negating imported energy supplies, increasing energy production will help reduce energy, energy prices from which many people are suffering at the moment. Going back to the matter of arable land, the land take is mineral, one tenth of one quarter of one percent of the available farming land in Shropshire. The land is not lost for farming, it has a possibility in the meantime to use for sheep grazing before we turn to arable mm -hmm. use. The soil has been noted as being less productive in its apparent fertility rating and will be returned with enhanced structure and fertility after a period of rest. The 40 year time period is in reality a very short time when it's considered as needed to protect the future for our children and future generations. Climate change impact itself is evidenced by protracted periods of drought, such as we suffered this year, and extreme rainfall, which reduced crop yield themselves. These issues have a far greater impact on food production than the temporary diversion of land to assist in the effort in reducing climate change impacts. I very much hope the committee will approve this application. Thank, Thank you. you. Any questions, Mr. Gilson, please? Please, welcome. No. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Resident speaking against the application and the other three minutes of this security. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name's Ros and I live in Bonningale. Uh, we're a very small parish of 121 households. Um, and only two of the parish have actually supported the application. Our village is embedded in our farming community. Uh, we are surrounded by farms. Our farmers are our neighbours and our friends. We live farming every day. Uh, and as Andrew just inferred, on most days, there are as many tractors as cars on our lanes. We follow the farming year uh, and see a wide variety of crops being grown locally. A normal for year for us would involve carrots, potatoes, rape, turnips, salad crops, cereals, as well as the fattening of heifers, sheep and pigs. In season, I can go to the All Brighton Co-op and buy carrots, potatoes and salad leaves that have been grown in the field a mile down the road. Um, I can go up to Newport and I can buy John Chester's beef. We strongly support as a community local food production and the lowest food vials possible. We're not against solar farms or renewable energy. In fact, the opposite. But this should not be at the expense of more local food production and food security. The UK, UK needs to produce more of its own food, not less. We need to reduce importation and reduce food miles. Policy and best practice says do not build solar farms on our best and most versatile land. Do not use grades one, two and three A land. Instead, use the poorer quality land and brownfield sites. The point of the policy is to protect our best land for food production. Yes, solar farm companies will need to work differently and more creatively, but then the result will be the right result. Solar farms in the right place, not the wrong place. Renewable energy and food security both being delivered. This application will sacrifice some of the best and most productive land in our area of the county. Please do not let that happen. I enjoy walking, as I'm sure many of you do, with or without dog. We are part of the Greenbelt where I live, 
and at weekends we get lots of visitors using the amenity of the green belt. Fresh air, beautiful countryside, lots of wildlife, all for free. The benefits of being outside and enjoying the countryside are well documented and evidenced. It is very good for health and well-being. It contributes to the quality of our lives. From the path you've heard so much about at the moment, you can see the Reekin, Brown Clee and Titterstone Clee. Thank you. Can you sum up there, please? We need to protect the green belt from harm. We need to preserve this free amenity. Please do not let this happen. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Any questions, please? Yeah. Thank you very much. Nick Gordon, introduced to us to the street and read um, a uh, statement from David Fletcher, <coughs> one year Parish Council. Thank you, Chair. One year of Parish Council wishes to confirm that our objection statement remains unchanged. Whilst we appreciate amendments have been made by the applicant, they do not change the basis of our original objection. We welcome the reduction in land area, but in our opinion, it does not satisfy our already submitted objections. Namely, it is situated in a green belt area. It is one of three sites around the Bindingdale and Old Brighton area, one in operation, giving the potential for cumulative effect. The views from our parish's highest point will be severely compromised. There is a well used public footpath here and the proposed screening to obscure the solar panels will also completely block the views of the Shropshire Hills. The vast majority of the land to be used will be high grade BMV. Initially, this was at 94%, with 65% being grade one and two. We believe the amended plan will reduce the figure to at 91%, with still the majority being high quality BMV. This is a small rural community with, family, with farming at its heart. If the committee passed this application for use of such high quality BMV solar energy, will it set a precedent for future applications across Shropshire? If so, this would then have a significant effect on high grade BMV and food production. We urge the committee to carefully consider this point. As stated by others and highlighted by John Stretton from the local historical society, Bynagale has a rich history and many buildings of interest. The proposed solar farm is close to the conservation area and many historical sites. We do accept our country is changing and the urgent requirements for renewable energy, but the same applies to food security. The more we produce within the UK, the less fuel is used in transportation of food to our shores, and by effect, less harmful pollutants emitted. The majority by sea, arguably the highest current polluter. We have also noted that in excess of 70 supporting comments were submitted by the applicant, were added on the 3rd of November, none of whom are current residents within Bunningale. It appears they've signed a generic form and would ask the committee to consider if these comments are relevant as they may not have a full understanding of the proposed site and its particular characteristics. At a public meeting held with, within the parish by BPC for residents, the unanimous opinion was against the application. We thank you for your time and request that this application is declined for the reasons given. Thank you, this. Now call as a local member, Nigel Lumby. And you have five minutes address the committee, please, Nigel. Thank you. I am disappointed that my second uh, submission hasn't got to you. I, I, I find that quite well. I can't repeat it all that, that I've got to say here now. So why am I here? Green belts. We're all councillors. We're all elected councillors. When I put my campaign leaflet in, my priority was to protect the green belt mainly because of the Junction 3 development, but I feel as though I've got a mandate to be here to defend the green belt. And somebody's got to, because unfortunately, Shropshire Council, who are usually really good at it, and are really tight on the green belt, here, because it's the climate, has suddenly sort of like, give up. I'm sorry, but that, that's how I feel. Um, and I can give examples of that. It's about openness. Now, in Beamish Lane, there was a, a family that wanted a small caravan and a static caravan. And the council fought it for three years. They turned up at the appeal with four officers and the appeal inspector eventually said, no, you can't have it. Because even that tiny little bit will affect the openness, even though you couldn't see it from the road. Because openness is about the whole thing. And yet here we are, Greenbelt, all of a sudden, oh, 58 hectares of it, it doesn't matter. 
So moving on then, where best and most versatile land. We've heard a lot about of it. Now, members, this is the third time this has come before us. And we have demonstrated last month that we can approve a solar farm when the actual developers have found a place that doesn't contravene our local policies, our SAMDEV and the emerging local plan. So we, we demonstrated that. In fact, that developer had to go away and take a bit of it there, 3A or 2 land out. And yet here we are at Pepper Hill with it majority being, in fact, now with the amendment, I, I reckon a quarter of it is grade one. Now, the developer will say that, oh, no, this land's not, it's quite poor. The energy map shows that that's where they needed the power. And in that fact, they did. The energy company went to the farming company and said, this is where we want it. Not the farming company saying, oh, this land's really poor. What can we do with it otherwise? So don't think for a moment that it's because it's poor land. Roger Pugh, who farmed it and his father before him, uh, they farmed it for 30, 40, 50 years. This developer has only been on it for the year because the previous year they rented it out. So I'm not sure necessarily they know their own farm well enough yet. Upper Pepper Hill Farm, derelict. I don't think it's derelict. Roger Pugh lived in it until two years ago. This company, because they're not a farming family as such, didn't want to live in it. Yes, it does need doing up. It does need doing up, and that's why they've just re uh, six months ago got a planning application in to change it so that it's got double, in fact, more than double the amount of bedrooms in, a huge viewing platform window with a with a, a lovely dining room in that you can see is probably going to be for letting to people that want to throw a big party and take the views in. Perhaps we need to protect them from themselves because if you've got solar panels underneath, who wants to go and uh, spend an awful lot of money? Which brings me around to this um, amount of money, the £200,000. That planning application went in anyway. They were going to do it anyway because they're going to be paying rates on that building. They're going to be paying double rates on it soon. So I... I think it's a bit smoke from mirrors, and I'm quite disappointed with how the report's been read because uh, been written to present before you. Because I think everything's just been dis dismissed when the reality is it's the best land and it, it, it's green belt. In fact, in fact, no, I was going to go on to another thing, but I'm watching the clock. I've got about six seconds left, so I'm I'm going to stop it there. I think I've I've said enough. Thanks very much. Next, any questions, please? Uh, Thank you, Nigel. Right, we now have some advocates, Matt Lomax. And we'll three minutes to address it. Thank you. Thank you. Members of the committee. Thank you for allowing me to speak today in support of this application. This proposal is for 23 megawatt solar farm with battery storage. Once operational, it will provide enough power for over 5% of Shropshire's homes, saving over 4,700 tonnes of CO2 per annum, and having a sizable and positive impact on the security of supply. A range of wildlife and community benefits are also proposed to ensure the proposal gives support to local people and the environment. Identifying suitable sites for any solar project is a complicated one. And apart from obviously the sun, the most important requirement for any solar farm is able to connect to the local electrical network. Such grid connections are not common. In, Shrap in Shropshire, the vast majority of the grid is overwhelmed and capacity only exists in areas where there's not land available of the scale required to generate this level of power. 
Where grid capacity is available, projects must still be sensitively designed to minimise their impact on local communities, environmental designations, and competing land interests. We have carefully designed this proposal to minimise such impacts, which must be weighed against the urgent need to deliver clean, secure and affordable energy to meet the climate emergency and the energy crisis that we now face. This site represents 0.2% of the Shropshire Greenbelt and 0.025% of Shropshire's BMV land, and over 40% of the county is BMV. This land will continue to be used for agriculture in the form of grazing, and will contribute to the diversification of a farming enterprise that is committed to sustainable initiatives across Shropshire. We have worked with stakeholders to design a scheme which is sympathetic to the local community and creates um, community benefits. Solar farms are temporary and this project will be fully removed at the end of its operational life. The combination of the climate emergency, the energy crises, and the lack of any suitable alternative sites creates a set of very special circumstances that support this application. In addition, as well as delivering clean, affordable energy to over 7,500 homes, the project also includes a £200,000 fund for the renovation of a derelict listed building, biodiversity net gain of 70%, new permissive routes for local people, a community benefit fund equivalent to £65,000, and a commitment to provide educational programmes in local schools. The result is a programme which is deemed a project which is deemed by your officer to provide a positive plan and balance where the benefits of the proposal outweigh the impacts. I therefore urge you to support your officer's recommendation and approve the application. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, please? Yep. Thank you very much. No, no, no committee. Councillor Parsons, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, th this, like all of these sort of major proposals, is, is a quite a difficult balancing decision. And, uh, you know, on the one hand, we have the provision of green energy, which is uh, a necessity, uh, both locally and nationally. <clears throat> and on the other hand, we have the potential loss of good quality agricultural land and I thought that the the two speakers from Boningale gave both sides of that argument without attacking the other the other side's point of view I thought they were two excellent uh, speeches um, now you, you have to look at a, a number of things I think in trying to reach a decision on this as I say the energy position is one that definitely needs to be addressed and it needs to be addressed locally um, and whilst we will lose for 40 years the uh, ability to grow some of the crops that are currently grown on this land there will still be uh, an agricultural usage in that uh, it will be used for grazing land I believe so it's not a complete loss of agricultural use, but it is a it is a, a possible downgrading in terms of uh, what we what we might, might expect from that. Uh, the, there's a, a balance between those people who are supporting the scheme and those who are objecting, and we heard some comments from the parish council, in a way doubting the the, the numbers as far as uh, that those were concerned. But we've also heard about the provision of additional footpath facilities we took a good look around these sites uh, this morning and from from the, what, what we saw the sites to the north of this plan that's on the the wall there the, the, i think it's four sites or three sites to the north didn't really cause any significant impact as far as we saw it in terms of its visibility the one that did was the one at the southern end. From the uh, we, we drove along the road towards Pattingham and looked down across the footpath there. That that one was the one that uh, wasn't as well shielded as as the other three areas. But as I say, it's all a case of balance, and on a on a matter of balance, I think I'm going to support uh, the officer's recommendation for this proposal. Thank you, Councillor Parsons. 
Yes, yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you, Joe. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend the uh, site visit this morning, so uh, thank you for Councillor Parsons for pointing out some uh, some interesting information from that. Um, my query, I suppose, I've got a question first of all, if I can, to uh, the principal plan in relation to um, paragraph 6116, which talks about our uh, zero carbon structure plan. I just, just, I'm not clear really of where we stand. The, the, the report advises that there's a certain amount of acreage of solar farm that will need to be installed to power the grid. And I, I'm not quite sure where we stand given the planning permissions that we already have. So that might be material to you know, decisions that we're taking in the future, like this one, for example, on large scale solar farms. So I wonder perhaps if you can just clarify that, that matter first. Thank you. Uh, yes, at the moment uh, we have that there was a tranche of um, applications that came in under the um, feeding tariff um, regime between 20, 2012 and 2015, and that's when the bulk of the existing ones came in. They're generally smaller sites between um, five and ten megawatts. Uh, most we're dealing with a 20, 23 megawatt scheme here, and some of the sites that are coming forward uh, under the current. Um, tranche which aren't um, subsidized uh, they're, they're sort of open market schemes are, are up to 49.9 megawatts above which level it becomes a nationally significant infrastructure but the level of provision at the moment for solar ground mounted field solar is is um, very small in comparison with what the um, uh, climate change task force and the climate action plan for Shropshire are i think that so uh, uh, that plan um, refers to the requirement for, um, I think it's around 500 megawatts of energy by 2030. Um, now, I think in terms of our installed megawatts at the moment, we are probably no more than, um, in terms of ground mounted solar, don't, don't quote me on this, but um, given that we have probably around um, 20 of these sites in place around the county, at an average of about four megawatts, I think that it's very unlikely that we, we're going to be more than about 100 megawatts in total capacity. So our proposal under the, the Climate Change Action Plan um, is going to require um, at least a five-fold increase above what we currently have. Um, uh, I don't understand we need to look at the statistics, but, but we are at a very low base level relative to where we need to be in order to achieve the, the um, uh, capacity requirements of the, um, uh, the Shropshire Climate Action Plan at the moment. Obviously, we've um, declared a climate emergency in 2019, and the action plan followed from that and has quantified the amount of renewable that we need. We're not going to get it from brownfield land because there isn't sufficient brownfield in Shropshire. We're not going to get it from roof mounting because there are particular um, structural requirements for roof mounting. We're a rural county. Um, so the only way that we can get it is if we have um, additional ground-mounted field arrays. Okay, that, that's helpful, Chair. Just one other point, perhaps, if I can ask as well. Yeah. Um, it was pointed out that um, 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 applications like this have to be able to connect into the grid, and there's, there's an interesting map, um, I think a little bit not far away from that particular point in the, in the report, that points out the, the area of connection possibility. And I'm just wondering whether any prior work has gone on in, in terms of assessing within that connectability area what the type of agricultural land uh, is, is available. Because one of the issues here is clearly this is grade one uh, agricultural land. And I'm just wondering, has there been any prior work either by the applicant, as far as you're aware of, or by the council, in terms of determining, you know, um, how much poor grade there is and how much high grade there is within that connect, connect, connection environment? <laughs> Yes, there has been an opportunity mapping exercise by the Shropshire Climate Change Partnership and the, um, um, the second plan in the middle of the report, part six of the report, shows an output from that uh, and it indicates in, in, in yellow the areas of, that's right, thank you, uh, opportunity potential for solar. One other um, land constraints have been taken into account. Now, this pointedly does not take account of green belts um, because national policy um, does not expressly preclude the establishment of green belts. Um, were it to do so, then there would be no yellow land, there would be no opportunity in the area between um, the west edge of Wolverhampton and, and the, the east edge of Telford, um, and, you know, the West Midlands green belt. So, so 
the opportunity mapping takes us a, 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 a starting pr presumption that um, um, it will be possible to establish solar within the green belts. Um, um, you then look at um, where there are connection opportunities. You have um, overhead lines, um, and theoretically you can connect into them um, along the route of the line. But in actuality, um, um, if you do that, it's hugely expensive. Um, you, what you really need is a substation, um, which provides a particular point where the electricity is, is accessible and you can make the connection rather than having to sort of drop a line down from an overhead tower. In this particular location, there is a substation within a connectable distance. Um, if you look at other locations within the green belts, um, uh, there aren't. Um, a lot of the Greenbelt land is on um, permatriasic sandstone. It's a good soil, it's light, um, it is of a higher grade generally. Um, if you are to have connections within the Greenbelt, you're more than likely to have them on higher grade soils. Um, if, you, if you say we're not going to use the soil, we're not going to have the Greenbelts, then the potential connectivity to the grids um, is lost and the ability then to contribute to the climate change action plan is, is um, compromised. You have to look elsewhere with, within Shropshire for that. Okay, all right, it's very helpful, thank you. Literally, please. Yes, thank you very much. I, um, in view of what uh, Graham French has said earlier, I do think that uh, you know we've got to be mindful of what was said in the climate change action plan, and that the fact that we need a five-fold increase in the amount of the renewable energy that we've got in the county. I think the uh, landscaping proposals in this application, in my opinion, will help to screen the proposed solar farm. As the report says, there will be an overall biodiversity net gain of 46% and a hedgerow net gain of 20%. Uh, the application will bring community and wildlife benefits. You know, going forward with, I think we all need to be mindful as well with the amount of uh, housing that's proposed across the country and in this county going forward over the coming years, there is going to be an ever increasing need to ensure that we have got enough energy security within the county. That's why um, I am minded to accept this application. Thank you. Better paper, please. Um, I found this very difficult to go through the papers um, prior to the meeting, um, and I was sort of swaying one way and another with, with regard to how I felt that uh, things should go. Um, however, I found the site visit this morning extremely useful, and I I always do find site visits very useful. I think it's very hard to uh, actually picture um, an environment without having visited it. Um, it's undoubtedly a lovely area, um, but it's not exclusively countryside. Um, we saw an enormous uh, commercial nursery. Um, there's a piggery. There's obviously um, the farm and so on. Um, I think we need to take into account the fact that um, we desperately need more um, renewable energy. And as, been, as has been pointed out, there are limited sites available for that, uh, for, for solar farms, etc. Um, but we shouldn't forget, we shouldn't ignore the need for um, food production, obviously, that's very important as well. So it is very much, uh, you know, weighing one up against the other. Um, I was impressed by the way that the developer appears to have um, really tried quite hard to um, offer something back to the community um, as part of this this development. Um, and yeah, I I feel. That I, th I, I do think that um, I'm inclined to to agree with this application. Thank you. Go to the bottom, please. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I hear what everyone's saying around the uh, need of energy security. Uh, however, I do have a focus on food security. And the thing that really bothers me about this application in comparison to applications we've had previously is the Grade 1 agricultural land that's included in this. Um, 
I understand and I hear what you're saying, that it will still be used for agricultural use for grazing uh, of sheep, but that will be of much poorer quality and the outputs uh, from that agricultural activity will be significantly less to what um, it can produce now. And also if farmed correctly, can produce um, um, as grade one agricultural land. We are not, um, it, it, you know, this part of Shropshire is, is where the, the best land is. It's a light soil. It's particularly good for growing crops, particularly good for growing um, salad and carrots and things like that. So um, I think it sets a bit of a, a, a dangerous precedent if we start to pull on that grade one land. Um, I've heard 25%, no, you say 25% of it being grade one. I presume the vast majority of it will be above grade 3A. There's not going to be land there that's um, of much poorer quality, uh, which is um, a, a concern for me. And I'm coming at it from that perspective. I hear what everyone's saying about the, um, the need for energy. Um, but I don't think we can lose sight of water and food. Um, not only for ourselves as a nation, but also for the rest of the world and what impact that has, particularly with what's going on in, in U Ukraine as well. Thank you, lovely. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I did the site visit this morning and it was very useful. It was very helpful to go and see the site. Um, I have been having read everything very much as um, um, Councillor Bagnall here, weighing between the food and the it, the energy crisis that we are in and to what we should be deciding and which way we should go. Um, the I do get the feeling that they are really trying, this company are really trying to put a lot of biodiversity back into and um, to balance out the, the taking out of the um, food. Um, so I, I think I'm actually going to probably support this application. Can you take me, please? Thank you, Chair. A lot of the things I was going to say have already been said. That's probably because I'm the last one to speak. Um, <laughs> perhaps I'll have to get in quicker. I think the decision to be made on this is, is because there are some conflicting uh, statements, perhaps. I mean, some of it says that it's best the most versatile lands, 25%. But then also there's a, a comment in there that some of the land is, uh, I think they call it drought condition land. Uh, and I know there's a question mark over the number of rejections, 22, where is 78 supported? Uh, I know the UK needs to produce more food, but we also need to produce more energy. Uh, it also says that the possibility the soil may be returned in a better condition for agricultural use at the end of the life of this as a solar farm. Um, but I'm drawn by paragraph 151 of the NPPF, which is mentioned in the, in the comments, which states that uh, use of green belt for this sort of thing should only be in very special circumstances. Now we have to decide as a committee whether the current climate emergency, energy crisis and economic crisis uh, qualifies as very special circumstances and in my opinion they do. Uh, so for that reason I'm minded to uh, support this application. Thank you. Thank you. I think if you look at this map and look at the sites, these uh, areas have been selected um, very carefully. Uh, there's a lot of greenery in between the sites. They deleted part of the site on the top left hand corner, um, which is uh, where the pub and the beer garden and everything else. And if you look at the site at the top of the map, which is just to the left of Bonington Nurseries, Look at the amount of glass, there's a Bonington nurseries when you're stood at the top there where the footpath is. Um, one balance is the other, if you like. Um, as I say, this has been very well selected. There's a lot of greenery in between each site. There's a lot of tree planting going on there. And I might need to support this application for the benefits of solar. Um, as I say, there's plenty of land there for agriculture. Um, the benefits to the community, which we can use as a material consideration. Um, and the farm action is going to be done up, and there's going to be more ongoing talks, I understand, with the village to connect footpaths and whatever. So I might need to support the application. Um, in fact, I would like to propose we go along with the officer's recommendation from the chair. 
right. You, you, you carry on, Jared. Oh, fine, fine. I wasn't intending to stop you, just indicating. Right. Okay. Well, I'm reminded to propose the application that we uh, accept the show the form. In that case, I'll second it, Chair. Okay. Do you want to come with me? Any comments? Oh, no, thank you, Chair. Okay. Would you like to take the work, please, Edwin? Yeah. We go along with the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so we're proposing a second to go along with the officer's recommendation. Please, can you confirm whether you vote for or against the proposal? Um, Caroline Bagnall? For. Nigel Hartin? For. Nick Hignett? For. Christian Lee? For. Hilary Luff? For. Richard Marshall? No, Richard shouldn't be on the list. Oh, he's not, sorry. Yeah, he's got a pot, isn't he? Apologies. Um, Tony Parsons? For. Ed Potter? Against. David Evans? For. For. So, the recommendation is carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. You might like to take a corporate break before we do the next application. Yeah. Feel free to do that.
I live again, Jerry. Yeah. Thank you. Right, we go into item number six, type of stone retreat centre, type of stone snail reach. Really let me read, is it? Indeed, Chair, yes. Thank you. Um, so this is an application which seeks full permission retrospectively for a recent ongoing temporary use of a former Methodist church and conference uh, retreat centre um, in the village of Stuyperstones. Um, uh, it's a single floor um, structure and there have been some internal partitions put in and it is being used uh, for refugees from the war in Ukraine, a, a single family. Uh, the only reason this has come to committee is because the um, principal agent to uh, facilitate the um, accommodation by the refugees has, has been um, uh, Councillor Heather Kidd, um, and, and uh, as such, the application is, is called to committee. Uh, so, um, Stiper Stones forms part of our community cluster. Um, there are um, other um, villages within that cluster and there are other community facilities in village halls. So it isn't as if this is the only facility within the cluster that would be um, affected. Um, uh, it's a proposed temporary use um, uh, under the um, uh, Ukraine sponsorship scheme, Homes for Ukraine, which has been uh, promoted by the government. Um, uh, and um, uh, I don't really have much to say other than that um, uh, this is um, a, an initiative clearly to be supported. Um, uh, Councillor Kidd has uh, been proactive to, to facilitate this um, and that the um, building will obviously revert to its um, pre-existing use um, when the need for the um, facility for residential use um, ceases. Um, so, so the officer recommendation is, is, is to support this, this humanitarian scheme. Thank you, Graham. We're now joined online by Councillor Kidd, a local member, and you have five minutes to speak. Heather, please. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I facilitated this application because it was a, a mechanism whereby it would be free. Um, the agency uh, being the agent and so on on getting the application in, uh, they raised all the rest of the money from subscription to pay for the planning application. Everything has been paid for bit by bit uh, by the community. So it's hugely supported. The family there are three generations of the one family and they've been there now about a month. And as you say, um, Graham, this is uh, a retrospective planning application. The um, centre was only used off and on. It wasn't a full time um, place of worship, but it was used for a retreat, but it was also used for some meetings. And the building has been there since the 70s and is there for the community to use. As you say, there are plenty of other buildings within that cluster that can be used. I might also say the local pub has been raising money towards this. So I would be grateful, despite the fact that it had to come to committee because I was involved in helping them get the planning application in, that you would support this. Um, because the family involved have had a real fight to get there. Um, they've been stuck several times because of ho Home Office rules and regulations and two parts of the family having the visas and the third not. It's been long and tortuous and they are pretty traumatised. So your support will be welcome and um, I will answer any questions you have. Thank you, Dr. Kate. Catch it up, please. Thank you. Um, I'm very much in support of this. I think it's great that a community has come together to support a family from Ukraine and I, I would be happy to propose it. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, a member of staff who works in my shop lives opposite, directly opposite this uh, converted chapel. I understand the family has been well received into the community. I understand they're trying to get involved in the community, uh, things that are going on. Uh, it's ideal for a, an extended family, which is what this is. There are other Ukrainian families living in the village of Ponsbury that are sharing houses with people. And I'm, I'm quite happy to second that proposal and I'm fully supporting this. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak, please? Uh, 
Any proposal on the table and a second there? Caroline Bagnall? Four. Nigel Artig? Four. Nick Higgins? Four. Christian Lee? Four. Hilary Luff? Four. Nigel Longby? Four. Tony Parsons? Four. Ed Potter? Four. David Evans? Four. That's unanimous. That's unanimous. Thank you for that, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. We now go to item number seven. Roundabout Junction on the A422 to Can Call Road, Mill Street. And so do you tell me. Thank you, Chair. This is um, an application for the erection and display of four sponsorship signs placed on uh, roundabout um, at Bridge North. Uh, next slide, please. Um, it's being brought to committee because the land is owned by the Shropshire Council and the proposal is not in line with our statutory functions. Um, the application, you might recall, it was deferred from the 26th of July um, Planning Committee as members wanted to allow further discussions with the Town Council regarding the potential renewal of the maintenance contract related to the roundabout uh, and to investigate the cost and revenue benefits which followed on from inquiries from the Town Council. Um, these discussions have now taken place and are summarised in paragraphs 1.2 and 1.3 of the report. And you can see that Shropshire Council will receive between 4,000 and 5,000 per year uh, from the advertisers. A portion of this would be provided to the Town Council and this would allow the current enhanced maintenance of the roundabout to be provided. Um, just go quickly through the slides, please. Um, so it's the dimensions of the of the of the uh, um, advertisements there. Next one. That's an example of the appearance and the location of the four signs um, visible to drivers approaching the roundabout on each of the four um, junction points. Um, there's no objections from. Um, our highways team in relation to the um, public safety or on visual amenity grounds and it's recommended that advertisement consent is granted. Thank you Chair. Thank you Galvin. Right, Councillor Larson please. Um, yes I, I can't see any issue with this. I'm happy to propose we accept this. Good. Yeah I'll second this. I think the only reason for the deferral was that we were concerned about whether the uh, Roundabout would continue to be maintained, and that's now been covered, so I'll second. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? No, to put it to vote, please, or just take it down. Thank you. Right, all those in favour of the application, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Starbridge Road, Alvester Road, Roundabout, Kelvin, please. Um, this is an application, a single application. Um, for the display of a total of 12 sponsorship signs on three roundabouts um, to the south of Bridge North. Um, as we've always been brought to committee, as the signs will be on council owned land, and it's not in line with the council's statutory functions. Um, yeah, if you just run through the slides of the locations again. Um, again, um, there's no objections from the Highways Authority or from Bridge North Town Council in relation to the um, signs. Uh, the applicant has confirmed that the signs will be um, erected by hand digging method to avoid any damage to any tree roots. Um, and officers don't consider there will be any impact on highway safety or public amenity, and therefore it's recommended that. Advertisement consent is granted. Thank you. Sure. Proposal, please. Absolutely. Uh, Martin, seconded by Temple. Tony Parsons. All those in favour? That's unanimous again. Thank you. 
Neighbor to number nine, list of appeals and appeal decisions. Graham, please. Uh, thanks for three decisions. Uh, two I won't mention uh, in any detail as uh, um, um, certificates of lawfulness that um, we um, refuse and are uh, upheld on appeal. Um, only one of the notes is a uh, proposal for a single property at um, 24 Snail Beach. Um, uh, and um, uh, this was a discussion in relation to the settlement guidelines. Uh, the, we, the concern of officers was that this additional property would take the proposals above the settlement guidelines by one, and that there were also potential impacts on heritage due to the proximity of the historic railway um, line, raised railway line. Um, uh, so we recommended approved refusal, um, but the appeal decision uh, was upheld. Um, on the basis that the inspector considered that um, uh, the settlement guidelines were not absolute, they were indicative, and that um, there was a possibility that the other houses that had been um, identified for coming forward may not all be delivered. Um, and that additionally, the inspector did not feel that the addition of this new property on the street street, street would materially affect the um, appearance of the heritage asset being the, the historic railway line. This was a finely balanced issue. It doesn't really have an, an, an implication for our settlement policy or, or any precedent, but it is a contrary decision to the officer recommendation. So I draw it to your attention. Thank you very much. Right, um, day to the next meeting will be December the 13th, Tuesday, December the 13th. I'd just like to thank you all very much for attending today. I'd like to thank those who visited the site visit this morning. It's not totally wet, but. Uh, <laughs> Here we are, as well, was it? And uh, thank you to our officers for all the uh, input and wish you all a safe journey. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to